and welcome to this video where I'll be giving a brief introduction to OpenStreetMap, um, both as an example of what we call volunteer geographic information. So this thing about that if the official data sets do not have the information you need, you can edit yourself. So this can be used, of course, in areas where there's really a lack of geographic information that probably where OpenStreetMap has had its really heydays. But it can also be used in situations where the official data sets do not cover the type of information that you need. So you can have your interpretation of reality more expressed. Plus there's some limitations to this. Um, as we will see, but it is a really good example of some of those dilemmas and some of those victories that lies in this volunteer geographic information. The other thing is that the OpenStreetMap has a really alternative conceptual model to what we will find in any other spatial computing system. So. It's also really interesting just to study the conceptual model, data representation, to understand what's going on, because there is so much data in OpenStreetMap, but it's often that we find that is a really useful source of data for doing analysis. So even though we have access to official data sets, you will find that you will often be going to see if you can't find something that suits your needs in the open street map. So that said, let's uh, look at this conceptual model. So our conceptual model is that at first glance, you must say there are three entity types, nodes, rays, and relations. Okay, apart from this relation, it looks like what we might expect in any other spatial computing system. However, at a bit closer look, this might be a too simplistic way of representing the data model of OpenStreetMap. A more reliable one would be this from Joachim Toften um, from the book on OpenStreetMap, where we say that, well, yeah, we have these nodes, relations, and ways. And the interesting thing is now, let me have this tag that we'll return to in a moment. The interesting thing is that there's only the nodes that have coordinates. So node is a point, and it is part of between zero and infinitive number of ways. So in a node can be part of zero if it's just a single tree. It can be part of one way, and so on. So, nodes are parts of ways, and a way can consist of between two and two thousand nodes. These numbers, by the way, are called the cardinality of a relationship here. So, this is using the relational data model. We have a node, and any way consists of between two and two thousand nodes. So, you can't have a way more than two thousand nodes, and then you'll have to do something else. And this is where these relations really come in. So relation is really used if you have something that consists of many ways. So for instance, you have a European cycle route going from Italy to Denmark or whatever. And that will, of course, consist of going along many different ways that are functioning to represent roads. So the root will have will be what we'll call a relation in this their model here. So it consists of many ways that consist of many nodes. Common for both nodes, relations, and ways is that they can have tags. So a tag is where we put the properties of our entities. So the attributes in a 
general physical model. So, but it functions a bit different. So normally, if you're going to create a geographic data set representations of toilets, you'll create a take our entity type toilets. So it has the properties of number of toilets and is a lighting and if it's wheelchair friendly. Then we'll create a property of uh, these three properties and we'll convert those to attributes in our digital representation. In the OpenStreetMap, what you'll do there is that you'll take a node and then you will link it to have a relation to a number of tags. One tag saying toilet, yes. Another one saying that's not great, but in principle. Um, number three, wheelchair friendly, yes. So you will have three tags on that node. Some nodes will have many tags, some nodes will have zero tags. Same principle with the relation. So this European cycle route will have a tag cycle route ID 7, whatever. Again, now that's not how it's really coded. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then that will relate to all the, the ways that represent the roads that that cycle route uses. And then, of course, the road itself is a way where it has a tag saying that is a road. So let's see how these function in practice, and then we'll come back to looking at how we define these tags and how free they are and what you can do more precisely with them. So these are those links that I'll be following. So first of all, OpenStreetMap just got into the OpenStreetMap.org, things drop this, I've zoomed in to Copenhagen, and if I zoom further in to Bilipagen, yeah. And I'll zoom further in onto this uh, here, which is called the Fig Live Pleasant so Traffic Playground. So which is a um, a playground where you can see if I look at their website here. So you can see it's the roads are not really roads; they are miniature roads where children can use their bicycles and walk around and learn how to navigate the traffic in a safe environment. So, oops, where did it go? Um, there. Okay. So, someone has made into this data into um, OpenStreetMap. So here we have a petrol station, and here we have a bus stop and traffic lights. Okay. Um, so if I click on this petrol station here, it will try and find it and say, okay, nearby nodes. Here we have something that's fuel and it has a node ID. So what you can see here is that here we have node and then the number of the node. There's only been made one version of it, so no one has questioned his mapping or been in and editing it. It says there's this immunity, so it's a service, fuel, and then, well, at least that person has said that there's no fuel available. So fuel, no. So this is these these are the keys, and these are the values. Okay. So same if we go and click on uh, the, let's say that one, and this bus stop here. You can see that we have a bus stop. It has the tag bench, yes. Has tag covered, no. It's the type bus stop is part of the key highway with the value bus stop. And shelter, no. Uh, so these are the properties defining that bus stop. 
can also uh, see who has done this editing if you want to write to him and say well yeah maybe maybe not and uh, if you, anyone has good ideas to how this should have been modeled instead um you can then take the discussion remembering to be nice and try to keep a social approach here so they say no 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 this is wrong i would say oh this is really fun this example here let's look at what we can do as an alternative way so people don't try and drive in to get petrol as they have the thing is that you can't see on the open street map that there's no fuel there so you just see it as a petrol station hmm. okay so these are the basic the basic building is that you create a object i'll just use um, two nodes i can take away for instance so this Check here. You can see that there is nodes, and we have a Tertia road. Yeah. So this is a private road. So it's a there's a cycle path track. Mm. Well, I won't discuss that again. Um, highway Tertia. So that is what's indicating that that is what defines the symbol on the map okay motor vehicles are not allowed um it's called a fig vine it the uh, sidewalks of both all of these are keys and all of these are the values and then you can see that this way consists of four nodes so these are the four nodes and uh, Let's see if uh, any of these I want to do this one. <clears throat> so this node here is part of two ways. It's a fig vine we had before and this one. And so this way here is then or probably that I'm going here, uh, which is again consists of in this case 21 nodes so if you can navigate around in this system consisting of nodes and ways and we could also um, for instance there is this thing here which is a hedge so a, or put to be quite great so a, um, let's see if I did I find it um could be a barrier Let's see if I can find for me uh you can see as I move along there it was so here this is a way okay so this area here is classified as a way you can see it goes in on itself and it has the tag barrier hedge okay this x shows one of the real problems of open street map data structure is that normally people think of a hedge as a linear thing but here we have an area that is carrying this property barrier hedge so this is the key this is the value this is the nodes so those were nodes and ways um i think i can show a relation if i click this path here down here um relation so here we have a relation. that's quite a lot of relations on this but that's why interesting um let's take this one so this is a relation it consists of this way, this delete, and then uh, this short way here, and uh, it has a restriction saying that you are not allowed to turn left. Okay, so you're not allowed to come driving down this way and turn left. So this is a relation. It's between this way and this way. 
and is just saying that you are not allowed to turn left coming from here going to there. So that's an example of a relation. So a tag giving a restriction, no turn left, that is between a node and two ways. So nodes, ways, nodes, ways, and relations are the building blocks. And they all have these tags which consist of key and value pairs. So we can look at these, um, learn these keys. You can, in principle, you can invent your own and also your own values, and that's to some degree within the principle of the open street mapping. Um, if you need them, it's very, it has had at least a very open approach that people could do what they needed. However, not a good idea in general. So there are some pages here. There's on, on open street maps wiki, there's this mapping features. And here we can see that we have this, key. here's a list of the keywords, immunities, and here we can say that you can have the, the key immunity and the value bar, and then there's a, here a description of what it is, a barbecue. So here we have, there's a little nice description of all of these different um, key value pairs and what they use. Preferably use these lists of standard key value pairs. And you could get really far using just these standard values. Um, it's a long list. There's a bit of structure to it here. So we, could, we talked about, we had this uh, highway. And so a before we had a tertia road, so we could have here highway tertia. So described what that was. This was this road in our our traffic light plan that was tagged as highway tertia. Another way to get a feeling of which of all of these are really used and how they're used, I find, is to go to the tag info. So again, here we have OpenStreetMap.org and the tag info and looking at keys. So here we can see how common the keys are. So we can see there are um, 2,900 pages. So I've just been doing some cleanups since I was here last time. Nice. Um, so the tag, the key building has been used 400 and uh, 37 million 600 whatever times in the data set. And if we click on this building, we can see over here it has what is the distribution of it. Most people they said building, yes, but then there are some different values that are people have given. We can dive closer into that by clicking on the value here and see yes, a house, residential, garage, apartment. So we can see that there are. Roof building, roof, mm, yeah, interesting. Um, so, um, it is, and then it has a definition of what it is, right? And uh, barn, and so on. Uh, so, we can see that there is just 1.8 million sheds registered in global data set. You can also go here and look at where they are in the world, so buildings are everywhere. We can go to the Wikipedia and see, okay, this building here, all of these keys, well, all of the common ones have a Wikipedia. We can see, we can look at the English version and see what that looks like here. Yeah. Uh, so, the key buildings, and here we see that we have what is a building? There's a little picture of the building. It should be used on 
nodes and ways and not relations. So that's what all this over here says. Then we have some of the classical values. So it says that it typically is just the most basic use is building yes. You can also say building and then what type it is. Um, and especially things like building and so on. But if you have a building hospital, you should mark it as a community hospital also. Okay. So here we have again what do we mean by we had this thing about building a roof before? Do we have the example of that? Um bam. basically you're gonna see all of these types there. To find find the example of looking for but what they are and there's a picture and there's a short description of them so that's the key value pair so if it is a sty a big sty or whatever then what that's building equal sty so bring us back to our thing here all of our elements, our nodes, our relations, our ways have tags. And these tags, there's recommendations, um, and they are common ones, so please stay using them. But as you can see, it can be really difficult because people can have different ways of seeing reality. It is typically some form of social construct, how we interpret what we see. So, and this um, brings me up to the next thing. The thing is that it's really, really nice to use OpenStreetMap. Pleasure of it is it's so open, so flexible. Um, you can go wild in tags. This is a tree, so it's a genius quercus, so it's an oak. It's more than, it's 30 meters. It is a tree that says it natural tree that's the main type of it it has a leaf type mixed and it has a leaf cycle of deciduous so this is then a, a tree in oh, a forest near here and so you can add lots and lots and lots of opening times what the place is called in different languages go wild the only thing is you know, it should be something that is that you can see and and, and validate. Um, so don't you know, it's it's not for inventing new design ideas. Thing is, it's a wee bit tough to get because that it's not classical attributes, but it's all nodes to tag relationships it's a wee bit tough to use in software that's not designed for working with OpenStreetMap and so, lastly it's a bit sometimes unclear of what's there I think this again from presentation with Joachim uh, there's a barrier fence here and at the same time it has a land use residential. So that line here, I guess that we could say that it is a fence and therefore in the line, but also the land use could indicate that it was an area. And the same thing we had with our example in, um, in the traffic line place where we had something that was a barrier hedge, but it was really one of these broad hedges which was an area so even though you find a way with the tag boundary value or, or, or barrier value hedge it's not necessarily a linear element and that does make it somewhat difficult to convert into other geospatial programs but it can be done and let's Let's look at a simple example of taking our data 
from OpenStreetMap. Let's find this one here. We're going back to where we were before. So I just want to zoom in on my area here. So what you can do also here is that you have this export and you can export your data. And I'll just export it and it will create this OSM file. It will pop up in my download folder. And I can then drag this. I'll just use QGIS as an example. So I'll just drag this onto my QGIS canvas. And do I want to import? Yeah, I'll just import everything. It, for most things, this will look a bit strange because what we see here is that we have so we have we have Philip Park and let's turn them off. Um get out here. And here we have all of those elements, and you can see we have our thing here, our hedge row from before. So it will probably be a line here. So that hedge row there is here interpreted as being a linear element. Um, and so there's a point, of course. So let's see if we can find where was our point. Where was our point? Uh, traffic. Ah, oh, that's a, a, a traffic sign. Um, up here. So, um, our bus stop here. So, um, we have all these different elements. So it's where you can see you can load it directly. This is. This is the raw OpenStreetMap format loaded into QGIS. And with some experience of SQL and curing these tags, can be done. Um, I will, however, say that often um, what I would do is that I would go to this um, GeoFabric in Germany. Where you can download data sets. So here we can go and say, I want to look at Europe. And let's take uh, Denmark. And here we can have all this OSM. And this PDF is a compressed version of that. Or we can have it as shape files. So you can load that into. Uh, ArcGIS Online or also loaded into QGIS. If you don't want the complexity of of um, of the OSM model, there is a relatively good description. No, not relatively. There's a really good description of how these shape files are created, how they relate to the tags, what structure. I'll link that uh, in the description to this video. So basically. Um, that's it for this, probably too long anyway, uh, video on OpenStreetMap, how you can use OpenStreetMap data, how to understand this really interesting, but also somewhat in complex data source. Um, and I hope you liked it, and I hope to see you in some more videos. So, bye.